Jersey Shore with a burst of high winds and a thrust of floodwaters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Larry Kane. A pounding surf, gale force winds, and pounding rain turned some streets into rivers. News 3's Robin McIntosh is there, braving the elements. He is live in Ocean City tonight. Robin? Well, high winds and heavy rains continue to pound Ocean City. In fact, they continue to pound towns up and down the Jersey Shore from Cape May all the way up to Long Beach Island. Take a look behind me. We're here on West Avenue at 34th Street. For most of the day, the 34th Street Bridge has been closed. In the last few minutes, the water levels have dropped somewhat, but still, a lot of streets are flooded. Going for a drive through Ocean City was more like taking a sea cruise. Streets were flooded, whole neighborhoods underwater, and hundreds of residents found themselves cut off. I opened my front door, and I said, well, the water's going to go down at 8.30. I opened my front door again. Low tide is not coming. It kept getting higher and higher. This is how Ocean City got its mail today. For anyone living along the back bays, it was water, water everywhere. We've been inundated with phone calls with people trying to find the best way to get in or get off the island. And uh, obviously some people uh, have not heated and tried to drive through the water. So we've been uh, trying to uh, get most of those cars towed. The flooding forced the closing of hundreds of streets and the causeways from the mainland were impassable. The Black Horse and White Horse pikes into Atlantic City and the 9th and 34th Street bridges into Ocean City had drivers following detours. On the bay side, heavy flooding. On the beach side, heavy surf. The coastline up and down the Jersey Shore was taking a beating and beach erosion was everywhere. The flooding forced many businesses to close their doors. The ones that stayed open piled sandbags outside, watching the water get closer and closer. Yeah, I know the guy next door has uh, at least eight inches of water in the showroom and about two and a half feet wow. in his back room. By mid-morning, it was too late for some low-lying stores. This Wawa on West Avenue found its aisles flooded. We haven't had this in about four years. It hasn't been this bad. <laughs> It may have looked like summer, but the case Leclerc has it poked away by Yonke. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rich Noonan. And I'm Jill Chernikoff. From Atlantic City to Cape May, a driving storm hammers the Jersey Shore. And that's first on Fox tonight. A nor'easter packing heavy rain and 60-mile-an-hour winds drenched the Jersey Shore today. Flooding streets, buckling bridges, closing roads and schools. Richmond Airy reports things are finally returning to normal. The sight of white caps at the Jersey Shore wouldn't be unusual. The waves weren't cresting in the middle of the street. The north end's entirely flooded, and the south end's usually high and dry pretty much. But the bay, the bay areas, they're all flooded out and everything, so we'll be out till late tonight. A bitter cold wind seemed to knife right through you as high tides and pounding rain ravaged the shore from Atlantic City to Cape May. Most people had the good sense to stay home, even though home might have been in harm's way. Those who did venture to work wound up stranded, forced to wait until the floodwaters receded. It's the highest I've ever seen it. About 10 o'clock, it surged out front here. It met the yellow line in the middle of the road, and it was up over the sidewalk. Driving is especially difficult and dangerous because you can't tell exactly how deep the water is. If you misjudge, you have a real problem. Some communities declared a limited state of emergency. The National Guard was called in just in case. Early in the day, getting from place to place was almost impossible. Roads and bridges were closed. It looks like the foundation of the bridge has uh, collapsed somewhat. The surface of the bridge is actually down a foot. We're close off traffic northbound. The storm took a good chunk out of beaches already in need of replenishment. That's not unusual at the shore. What is unusual is not being able to see where the ocean ends and the street begins. In Sea Isle City, Richmond Airy, Fox News. Well, it really has been a weird winter. While we got the rain, some to our south have been hammered with snow from this storm. Parts of North Carolina, West Virginia, Kentucky, and even Georgia got blasted. Up to four feet of snow could fall before it's over in the central Appalachian Mountain region. National Guard troops in North Carolina, West Virginia, and Kentucky have been mobilized to help. Tens of thousands of, pe of people are without power tonight. And now on to our weather. It was a real soaker out there today. What about tomorrow? Frank has the latest in first weather. Frank? 
Well, things are getting better and better, Rich and Jill. The rain is starting to end down the shore, and we have a great forecast for tomorrow. Take a look at radar. The rain is being stubborn, though. It won't leave Atlantic City. It's hanging right there. By the next few hours, it should push offshore. The rain has already ended in Philadelphia. Your wake-up forecast calling for mostly fair skies. Temperature right around 30 degrees. Now, some parts of our area picked upwards of 8 inches of rain today. We're going to pinpoint those areas for you coming up in a little while. Rich, Jill? All right, Frank, thanks. Well, President Clinton is on his way home now after a trip to Wisconsin, trying to distance himself from the rumors and allegations surrounding the Oval Office. Mr. Clinton was received by tens of thousands of cheering supporters, but he couldn't completely escape scandal. Wendell Gohler has the wrap-up of the President's Day. The President sought political sanctuary in the heart of the country, making his 15th trip to Illinois, his wife's home state and comfortable territory. Illinois' electoral college votes put him over the top in 1992 and 96. Aides described Mr. Clinton as buoyant over the reception his State of the Union address received the night before, and they signaled he has said all he's going to for a while about Monica Lewinsky, blaming his silence on what they called the hostile proceedings of independent counsel Ken Starr. Thousands lined up for seats in the University of Illinois Fieldhouse, nestled in farm country. Most were apparently unswayed by what the White House considers a media feeding frenzy over the sex scandal. I think that the scandal has been created mostly by the media. The majority of the people think, well, yeah, maybe he did it, but the majority of the people also still support the president. I'm concerned about mor uh, integrity and, and moral character. There is a new way, his way. Inside, an unusually animated Al Gore exhorted a faithful crowd to back the president in his hour of need. And I want to ask you now, every single one of you, to join me in supporting him and standing by his side. But a more subdued President Clinton appealed for harmony in a 17-minute speech that was not once interrupted by heckling or protest. Keep your eyes on the future. Believe in this country. Believe in yourselves. Reach out across the lines that divide us. Mr. Clinton's departure from Illinois was delayed when Air Force One got stuck in the mud unfortunate image, but a chilly welcome awaited him in La Crosse, Wisconsin, a message in the snow that read, impeach. The White House is heartened by polls that show the president's public approval rating is still strong, and that the percentage of people who believe the sex scandal story, while still high, is declining. With the president in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Wendell Gohler, Fox News. President Clinton's former chief of staff was on the grand jury hot seat today in the White House sex scandal. Leon Panetta Actually testified before the jury. He was asked questions about Monica Lewinsky, the former intern with whom the president has been accused of having a sexual relationship. Last week, Panetta angered some Democrats when he said if President Clinton had a physical relationship with a White House intern, then Al Gore will be president. Today, Panetta was much more careful with his words. That I am personally not aware of any improper relationship, sexual or otherwise, by this president and any of the White House interns, or anyone else for that matter. First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton appeared on a network morning show for the second day in a row to defend her husband. The First Lady once again refused to answer specific questions about the President's relationship with Monica Lewinsky. She says the President won't be saying anything about it either. And I know that that must be very frustrating for people, but that is the way the system works. And uh, you won't hear any more from Vernon Jordan, you won't hear any more from my husband, uh, because they have to abide by the rules uh, that uh, they operate under when they have these investigations. The First Lady said she had spoken to the President about everything, everything, and she believes him when he says the Lewinsky allegations are false. She would not talk about reports that the President has now admitted that he had a previous affair with Jennifer Flowers. Monica Lewinsky's attorney confirmed today that his client had an affair with a high school drama teacher. Andy Blyler says the affair ended after his wife found out about it. The attorney says Lewinsky told the couple she was having sexual contact with a high-ranking White House official. Meantime, reports say Lewinsky's been offered $2 million to pose and tell her story to Penthouse magazine. Penthouse says she would have to pose partially clothed to cash in, but her attorney says that'll never happen. Absolutely not, and I will tell the public unequivocally now, if she even thought about it, I would leave the case. This is a matter of gravity for this country. We are not selling anything. I won't even take an ashtray uh, or a souvenir that says Fox News on it in this case, much less allow her to accept money for any part of this. 
Ginsburg says he's hopeful that his client will be granted full immunity, but if not, he'll instruct Lewinsky to take the fifth if she's called before the grand jury. Cabinet members are traveling the country, including our area, echoing the president's plans for the future. Attorney General Janet Reno joined Senator Joe Biden at Gallagher Cobb's Middle School in Newark, Delaware. They talked to students about the need for after-school safe havens for young people. The attorney general said it's important to find ways to keep young people off the streets and out of trouble. But long ago, as a prosecutor in Miami, I learned that if I wait till a child is convicted of a crime at 18, that's too late. Reno says the school's programs can be held up as examples for schools all over the country. In his State of the Union address, President Clinton called for expanding after-school programs to help 500,000 children stay away from drugs, alcohol, crime, and gangs. If you are one of the thousands of people who use Route 202 near the King of Prussia Mall during rush hours, you know that traffic can be a mess. That's why a big expansion is planned. Tonight, some residents who live along 202 are making some noise about that expansion. In fact, it's the noise that they are worried about. Jesse Gary joins us now from Devon, where residents voiced their concerns at a meeting tonight. Jesse? Rich, imagine sitting at home watching this broadcast and having to take your remote control out and point it at the TV and turning the volume way up just to drown out traffic noise. Well, that's what some people in a different township have to live with. We're talking about people living in pricey homes, two twenty dollars to $300,000. Tonight, another step in the fight for sound walls. As far as I'm concerned, uh, there is no beauty in the noise that we're hearing. Trish Bolden and husband David have lived in their Tredifran Township home two decades, spent $75,000 five years ago to remodel with the hope of selling or staying. But take a listen at an open bedroom window. David, forced out on the new porch for a smoke, says traffic sounds from Route 202 have cost him sleep. Expanding the four-lane route to eight lanes would make him an insomniac. I think that if they put the walls up, they would contain that uh, sound of the truck. It's mostly uh, tar tra uh, tired noise that you hear. But as far as we're concerned, there will be... Hundreds of two different township residents met with PennDOT officials. The original expansion of 202 called for sound wall. Not necessarily.